I was building no brand. And so I was actually creating no long-term value. It's kind of wild to watch like other businesses build their businesses on top of us. It's like, that's, you know, as a founder, that's like the most awesome thing. Build a company and if you get like momentum, like just like, that's the best business knowledge that you're ever gonna gain. Cody, how are we doing today, man? Thanks for coming on the show. Of course, man. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me as always. I'm stoked we got to connect and finally get to do this. I know you've been crazy busy with all this. Like, <laughs> I feel like you're going viral in the whole podcast world. Like some of the guests that you've had, I'm just like, how are they even here? They, it's, you know, testament to what you're doing. It's awesome. It's awesome content and the whole thing. So anyways. Dude, thank you so really much. I, I, to gas you up, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much, man. I could that? say the same for you. I'm just trying to keep up with you. I oh, if if I could get as many eyeballs on my content as you can, at least on X so far, I'd be I'd be really happy. So I think we're in mutual ground, just in separate air arenas. Well, I'm um, stoked to take this, man. We'll chop it up and distribute it everywhere, like to all the you know to the audience, and try to get you as much kind of attention as we can. So, anyways, stoked. Yeah, super. Excited. Thank you so much. See any future guests listening that's how you come on a show just immediately drive value and gas up your host that's how that's how you're going to get the softball questions to really blow it out of the water <laughs> um i'm not trying I, this, this is really how you buy, bribe people now it's just like get me distribution <laughs> dude uh, i mean distribution is the name of the game and i can guarantee for anybody listening right now there's going to be plenty of conversation about distribution i think Cody is one of the best at that. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to kind of touch on that. But just to dive right in, you dropped out of college twice <laughs> because you had two businesses that blew up and then actually blew up. Um, how was that experience and what did you learn from that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I went to like a state school and straight up was just honestly not very engaged. Um, I'd say <laughs> but I, I studied uh, economics and was. You know, I'd, I'd been selling stuff online for as long as I can remember. I was basically like, how do I make money on the internet? Just like everybody, you kind of start just like that and get sucked into the drop, drop shipping world. And then from there, somehow you end up in B2B marketing or B2B SaaS, right? Natural progression that everybody goes through. Um, but yeah, so uh, for me, I was kind of early um, specifically on some platforms uh, that were selling e-commerce stuff, um, like you know, it really like early uh, Amazon, like fulfilled by Amazon. Um, we were doing a lot of like drop shipping products of print on demand in particular. And so I just remember I had this class where like, it was during the holiday season, like right before, um, basically like the end of the, uh, like, you know, go into Thanksgiving, et cetera. And I was like in the classroom, basically just you know, a grand, like made like in that day made a grand. And I was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> so honestly, it's just like all my focus went there and I, I, I knew I wanted to start companies and do that. And so the, kind of that opportunity arose. And, I always joke, I like dropped out twice. I really failed out is what actually happened. Like, you know, I was like, these things were making like money and I, 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 there's no better way to kind of get, you know, um, you know, get your legs under you than actually building things. And so just kind of capitalize on that. Um, yeah, that, that was really it. It was mainly uh, like we were selling like, like print on demand products. I was building no brand. And so I was actually creating no long-term value. It was like very transactional things. Um, and so uh, I, what ended up happening the first time um, was we basically, like I was traveling with my younger brother and it, I mean, you know, you, I was 22 and making like 10 grand a month, just like passively, right? And like, we were yeah. like living out of a backpack and hostel hopping. And I remember I was in Portugal, I was sitting outside of the bar. I got drunk at the night before. I was bumming their Wi-Fi because I knew their pat like their code, and I got an email that was like a, basically like I got kicked off of um, Etsy, which at, at the time was like seventy percent of our revenue. And I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like we don't have a business <laughs> anymore. And so yeah. I remember I booked tickets home. We like slept on airport floors for the next like three nights, and basically like got back to the U.S. and was like, "All right, I have to figure out my life." And ended up going back to school, and you know, it took me like forever but i actually got a degree i remember when i graduated my mom's like is this actually happening like is this for real or you, is this is like a <laughs> so pretty pretty funny but anyways yeah that's kind of the, the high level story I, I always try to tell you know anybody just like build a company and if you get like momentum like just like that's the best business knowledge that you're ever going to gain and so just like put as much of your you know mental energy and really just resources that you have available time and money towards it because it's just going to make you you know so much farther ahead than everybody else and all the peers that you're kind of competing against later on. So but anyways, yeah, hopefully yeah. that answers the question, but no, no, dude, dude, that's amazing. And I think it's really cool. And I think it's, I, I know you're a big travel guy. 
Um, how much has travel influenced the person you are now? And what type of things have you been able to take from travel that have created a better Cody in the business world? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, like the one thing, so I lived in Germany for a while and it's like, there was just never a moment where I had this epiphany one day where it was like, you're never going to actually ever be native. <laughs> and it's like, you just have to be comfortable with like always being wrong. And that's just like one of the most powerful things, especially as like a founder and entrepreneur, right? It's like, you have to be incredibly comfortable with just like being wrong and being like, cool, I'm wrong. And like, I will never be right with this or whatever. Um, and just kind of having that like ability to bounce back. And then also just like powering through that. Um, so I think that's a component of it. And like always too, with all that, like nothing ever goes right. <laughs> and that's like this other component of uh, like businesses. And like, I, I still struggle with that. I think every entrepreneur is like, you know, I look at these products and I'm like, that could be so much better, right? And it's just like be patient and um, you know, kind of just like trust the process because you have to just go through that. It's like it's always you know, you from the outside looking in, it's like, oh yeah, it's this <laughs> you know well oiled machine that's actually like you know like design well. And, and in reality, there's like so much that's happening that's just like fires that are constantly in the background. That um, I was there's a saying that I always thought was really interesting. Um, it's basically like be like a duck. It's like you on the surface of the water, they don't like the, like they're working at all, but like underneath, they're like swimming as swimming as hard as they can. And it's kind of that same structure when you're um, a founder and building, especially like zero to one in companies. Like nothing is ever working. And I mean, I could talk to that specific. Like we just like Draft Horse went viral in its first months. Like we like basically didn't have infrastructure for the amount of volume that we were seeing. And so we had to like distribute like <laughs> across multiple API keys and we were like using friends that had higher limits and like all this, like all this stuff basically to like kind of solve the issue, like solve that growth problem. And, you know, on the front end, you're like, yeah, like, sorry, there's a delay and you're like doing all this customer work. But in reality, like in the background, it's just like, you know, it basically constant, you know, you're just, it's a forest fire that's blazing. Right. So anyways, um, yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of, I, I think components of it from the travel side that really like, influence how I view the world. Um, also just like travel always pays. You always run into somebody and you always like have some experience that like, I mean, I've had so many doors open just by like you know, freak interactions or, you know, random meetings, whether it's like on a plane or at a club or whatever. And so um, anymore, I just like, especially like the hot, it's, I think that that's like a really valuable thing for like anybody who's like young and starting out, like go to a place where there's like density of all this happening. Mm -hmm. Um, like SF is a classic one, like more modern ones are like Miami, New York, Denver, um, Austin. Right. And really e even like Nashville is having like some, some, uh, things happen, especially in the like media space and LA of course is like a traditional one as well, but, um, just go out there and try to like really just shake hands and just with no aim. Right. And always what ends up happening out of that is like these doors open up that you just didn't know even existed previously, but you, you want to be there and you know, you wouldn't have that un unless you were just in that physical geography. And so I think that's a huge, like something that I found like really valuable just from all, I mean, I was doing it way more when I was younger, right? Like I, <laughs> I didn't have a home for a while. I, was, you know, I, mean, I, would, I would always joke like, <laughs> or I had a girlfriend at the time that she was like, Oh yeah, he's homeless. Right. And I would just like be bouncing around like that type of thing. So anyways, that's, yeah. It's too funny. <laughs> and like, I'm born and raised in Miami, still here, nice. and I can attest to the environment over the last three years has completely changed. Totally. And it's funny, I always go back and forward with like adults in my family about how, my opinion, college used to be somewhat necessary because of the fact that you could, and like, when I say college, going to like a legacy college, a good expensive college. Yeah, there was benefits because you would meet people that you couldn't meet otherwise because there was no social media. There was no texting. Like, so yeah, you would go get value. And I'm like, but now I could just go sit at the bar at Bal Harbor, an expensive mall in Miami and camp out there a whole day. And I might change my life just by having one conversation with the right person. And I think that's just this crazy world that we live in right now, where if you're in these hotbeds, like you said, the opportunities are endless. And I just interviewed somebody who was like, because I asked him, I was like, you're, you're leveraging your network so well right now. What is a, what is something you could tell people listening? And their answer was, you're less than 20 people away from somebody who could make you a million dollars. And I was like, interesting way to look at that. And it's like, 
if I just go out there and network my ass off in these hotbeds and meet people like-minded individuals, the opportunities are there. You just got to go find them. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think it's easier than ever. Um, I, the only, the only thing I push back on is like, I think that traditional institutions, they still have a brand name. Like if you go to like a Stanford or a Harvard, or, yeah. you know, what, any of these that like those, I mean, it's like why people go to YC, right. It opens yeah. doors. Um, but the, I think the thing that is totally different now, like, you know, as an example is like, I'm just a, you know, I'm a guy from the fucking sticks that found a laptop and taught himself how to do like, you know, digital marketing uh, off of like YouTube video videos and Reddit like case studies. Um, yeah. and like, you know, it's been 10 years of doing this. Right. So it's like, it's not like, and, and honestly now more than ever, it's easier and you can probably do it way faster. Like there wasn't the, the documentation that existed currently that there was, you know, uh, like five, even five years ago. Um, but yeah, I think, I think more and more, like if you just do stuff <laughs> that you think is interesting and documented and talk about it in a public setting, like people are going to find you that find that interesting. And like, I mean, we'll probably talk about this at some point, but like Twitter has been a crazy like piece for that on my end of just like opening, you know, conversations and get, just the inbound I get is nuts. Right. Where you're just like, you know, because of the stuff that you're talking about in public, people just like, they want, they, they, they want to interact with that because that, you know, every all, all founders are trying to talk to other founders. Right. It's like, yep. you know, this. so anyways, yeah, yeah no, and I, and there, I, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and I think it's great. And I, I agree 100%. Like, these social media platforms, if you change them from being an entertainment based platform to a input based platform where you're just going and trying to get input out of it, meeting people, connecting with people, you get such a different view and like people don't use them that way. And like Twitter, I in high school, I was like a Twitter consumer. I would just tweet weird things and I was in high school messing around and then it went quiet just did not touch Twitter for the majority of college built businesses on discord, Twitter and discord had a unique connection. Didn't take advantage of that whatsoever and built all these cool companies that ended up blowing up in the wrong way. They blew up in the right way and then the wrong way. And I had no brand like you, I, I just took nothing with me forward. So I had to start from square one. And it's like, yeah, I could go back and say uh, I generated X, Y, and Z dollars and built communities of thousands of people. Nobody cared anymore because there wasn't any proof or there wasn't documentation. So I think it's cool that people are able to now like really at scale, just talk about whatever they're doing. And it turns into these sellable big businesses. It's just, I mean, it's amazing. hundred percent. I mean, I think podcasts are that now, right? Too. Like yep. we're seeing that happen. Like what you're building as an example, like I... I'm seeing these like two person like businesses based on million dollar media companies like on the back of AI. Right? It's like cool. They like record in Riverside. They like you know download it and use AI basically to like repurpose all of the content. And it's like that's taking two hours of their time per week. I mean, half the people I know that are doing this, they have like day jobs, right? And they're just like, if this is a side project thing. But, like, right here. <laughs> exactly. Like prime example. Yeah. Right? But like what's going to evolve out of this is like you're going to have this massive distribution channel and you're going to have all these founders listening to this podcast. And then you have the ability to go and sell at a CPM. That's just ridiculous, right? Like why does like the founders podcast or any of these other ones like have like these like, you know, ability to basically sell like ads and, and, and that at a scale that nobody else does. It's because they have this, the attention of this really like hard to get, you know, audience. And so anyways, I, I guess um, what I'm trying to say is like right now it's easier than ever. Like I, and I think about this in like every like pivotal technology shift moment, like when it was like internet, when it was mobile, and like now it's like let's say AI piece. Like at any like at any like like foundational technology shift, everything basically gets like shaken up again, and like you have the mm -hmm. ability to basically like create these companies that you would never be able to previously, just because the market forces like the dynamics have shifted and they changed, and so because yeah. of that, like I mean, again, we're gonna see these media companies where it's like maybe it's even just. 10 people, but they're going to be doing like 10 million a year in revenue, right? Because they just are basically figuring out how do I chain together all these AI pieces to augment the human aspects? It's like, yeah, humans are still involved in the first 5% and the last 5%, but that middle section, you know, that 90, that 90% in the middle section is where like it, these, these technologies that they're building are going to basically augment their teams. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we're at a really unique point and I can't wait to get to the meat of this episode where we can talk about distribution and all this good stuff. The last kind of 
question-ish moment I have from your earlier, early on career is you went from a full digital nomad to helping a friend scale a healthcare company from 20 million to hundred over a hundred million in six months. How did that happen so fast? Like, I mean, those are huge numbers. What, what went yeah, down there? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it was like, they, there's so many companies that are like this, like, and they're actually my favorite companies to work with. It's like, how are you growing? And it's like, well, word of mouth only like, this, that's the only channel that we've been able to get to work. And it's just like, I hear that in, you know, <laughs> the growth person in me, it's just like sirens start going off and it's like, okay, yeah. so you're growing it, you know, whatever it is, six to 10% compounding month over month, which is an insane growth rate. And that's only co- occurring from word of mouth. And they're like, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, like <laughs> there's so many things that you can basically do to like you like you layer on all of these growth, like strategies and tactics and combining those together, like you can lift basically these, these companies. Like I, it's, I, I, and we can talk about this more, but like, I, I think about it as like digital gravity. So like, I'm trying to make digital mass on the internet so that I get more gravity within the niche or the, the sphere that I'm in. And so at that company, it's called Rupa Health. Um, I like my friend was the head of growth there. And he basically was like, I turned on ads and this happened. And I'm like, you know, it was just the graph was ridiculous. And so yeah. I remember he called me on a Sunday, showed me the data, was like, you know, you want to come help me basically like build this company or like, uh, like help me you know, grow it. And I had an interview with the CEO that Wednesday, I accepted the offer Thursday. And then that Monday I moved out to San Francisco, which is like a bag, right? Like I just, it was like, cool. Yeah. I like, slept on a friend's floor for a week and figured out like lodging and stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the things that we did there and like re- something that we really capitalized on and really focused on was like building owned media and owned distributions. Like, what is that? It's basically um, like creating uh, channels that you have that can never be taken away from you. And so like uh, my view about companies and like what I preach and you know, basically um, am a disciple to as well is like we need to think about our, like modern companies and you think about themselves as we are a media company that makes products, <laughs> like not a product company that makes media. And yep. we're talking, like, everybody's talking about, like, oh, it's the creator world. Like, we're coming into this world where, like, creators have the audience, and then they build these products, and they sell that to their audience. Well, it's, like, that same idea, except we're doing that on a brand level. And so at Rupa, that was something that we, like, from day one, basically tried to, to spin up, right? So we built, like, massive newsletters, and we built a huge podcast, and we built, like, live classes, and we built, you know, all of these things. And what it allowed us to do is we made this long-form media that we could then take, and we could chop it up into all these different variations. So I could make clips out of it. I could make blog posts. I could make tweets. I could make, you know, everything that we could imagine. And what that then allowed for is then, you know, we layer on all of these growth strategies and like we can actually get into this. Like we built, you know, I basically scraped all of our, that target audience's email addresses in the US. We like sequenced them into a newsletter. We cold emailed these people about the podcast. And then it's like we saw open rates where at, at the time it was like 40% with like CTRs around wow. like 5%, you know, just crazy. Like you couldn't get that kind yeah. of email like at, the, at, at scale. And then, so that was like one component of it. And then, you know, we did all the traditional stuff to get layered on top of that as well. Um, like from, you know, paid ads to like, like long form SEO content to, um, you know, any, any anywhere that our audience was, <laughs> we really like tried to be there. And like, that's my philosophy is like, wherever they are, you need to be there every day constantly. Just like consistently saying the same thing over and over again. And so that was really like our core focus and, and like how we made that company grow really quickly. We ended up finding that like partnerships were a huge piece. And so then we doubled down on that and like invested a lot in those resources. But I mean, there's so many random things we did there. Like I remember one of our, we started doing conferences while I was there. And um, one of the uh, like things that we realized and it, from a feedback that we got from a, another company that was like crushing conferences was like, give away a thing that's like a big stuffed animal <laughs> that like is hard to like fit in a bag. And what that does is it creates inbound. And so then it like, it changed my whole philosophy and idea about like conferences. So like when I'm, you're at a conference, you're basically trying to create like word of mouth to happen outside of your booth so that people come to you. And so then yeah. like from that, what we ended up doing is like, okay, cool. Now that they're here, how do we get them to stay? So we like, we built an Instagram trap that basically like they wanted to take a photo and it gave them a Polaroid and then it created this like conversation, right? So you have that inbound and it was really, it, it's funny, like in hindsight, like looking back on it, you're like, oh, this is all the digital strategies that we use. Like it's the same thing, but just like translated into the physical world. Like, of course it's going to work, right? It's the same, it's the same principle. So I think, um, you know, a lot of the things that we did there were really that it was the same ideas, just how do we apply them in different settings in different places and just get creative in the distribution. So. 
but and did did getting the budget of being able to work with a big company like this you think that had a huge influence on how good of a marketer you are now because you were able to low risk try and, and troubleshoot different things I mean, we were fighting for budget. I think it's always like okay. <laughs> every marketing, every you know, every marketing org is constantly fighting for budget, right? Um, traditionally, like they are like the biggest, you know, it, the biggest cost center, right? Yeah. Um, and this is actually something that we like. We we're like, cool, like, okay, well, say we build a media company, right? And I really took influence from like what um, there's this company called Aero Electronics, and and then Red Bull is another classic one where they like they built these media houses. And then these media houses are marketing vehicles. They're like engines to do distribution. But what it allows them to do is it create, they can create the rails that they can put whatever they want on. And uh, the, you know, basically the, what we tried to do at Rupo and what we ended up accomplishing was like, you know, what if we build this media where we could then go and we could sell ad space and could we like make the growth department basically cost neutral, right? So like, instead of being a cost center, it was now a profit center and we just came out to like break even. And so I like one of the things that happened right when I was uh, uh, leaving that company was uh, they like ended up selling ads on the podcast. So like a you know, huge uh, direct like D2C, like health brand. And um, like that was covering like <laughs> more of the, co- you know, majority of the cost of the entire growth team, which is crazy when you think about that. Like this yeah. is a funded company that has like cash to blow, but suddenly like they built this asset that's like paying for its own distribution. Like you, you, you can't, yeah, I mean, you can't make that up, right? It's like, it's like, it's insane. So anyways, um, I think that, yeah, like it, 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 with, when it comes to budgets, like constantly you're fighting and everybody's like, what's the RI? What's the RI? And like, you know, for the first six months of the podcast, it looks like nothing. Right. Yeah. And then suddenly in the last, like, you know, month four to six, that's where you go from like, oh, we got 20,000 downloads. Oh, we got 60,000. Oh, we got 120. Oh, we're a top 20 medical podcast in the U S like. If you look back in hindsight, you know, it's six months ago, like, and, but again, you're just like, you're, you're, you're repeating the same pro like you're like marketing is really what you're doing is you're selling internally, <laughs> like mm. constantly to the rest of the organizations on like, and you have to repeat it, right? It's like, here's our North star. Here's what we're doing to take steps towards that. Here's our progress towards that. Okay. And then every week you're just reiterating those goals, talking about the like adjustments that you're making along the way. But that's actually how you make growth works like really successful. That's how you have to structure them to actually accomplish anything. Because like otherwise, you're just you know it, most of these companies they're looking for immediate ROI. But like these are long like especially when you're building owned media. Like how I think about it is like if the law of shitty click throughs exists, which it does, that basically means that like over time more and more people are going to bid on the same inventory, which means that the price is going to go up. So the only way to combat that is you have to build own media channels. That basically, like, you know, it's a downsloping curve in the cost structure, and then the law of shitty click throughs is an upsloping curve, and that's how you create, like, basically, like cheap uh, acquisition or like mm-hmm. you know, keep that CAC at the same thing that it was like for that whole period. So, anyway, yeah, yeah, no, and and I think that's you made it made a few good points there, but it's good that you highlight that it's not a short term win. People are become so obsessed with like why is this not making me any money in the first two months? Like I'm quitting. And it's like, well, I mean, things aren't that easy. It's not that easy to build a successful business or a growth engine, or like you said, owned media. So it's always good when people can understand that we're playing the long game here. Like I'm on, ep- this is probably the, maybe the 45th episode I've recorded over the last three months. And I, I'm not even thinking about episode 50. I'm thinking about episode 500. And it's like, if if you think that way, I'll be excited if there's great growth at episode 250. I'm at the halfway point. Now, some people might do 45 episodes and have 67 subscribers and 100 people that view an episode and be like, well, I'm failing at this. But you're really not. Like, you're not. So I always like to highlight that things are not super simple. Like, so you're not just going to snap your fingers and get instant inbound and money coming in i mean it happens sometimes but that's a lot of luck in my opinion and things just go in the right way 100 i mean also it's like the faster things grow the faster they can fail like i've yep. seen it time and time again like typically curves that go really quickly up and to the right also go really quickly down to the right right it's like a flash yep. in the pan. 
And so like, that is a huge component of this and something that I don't think is talked about. Like you, I, I personally, like I would rather have like a curve that looks something like it's compounding growth 20% month over month, right? Like that's still incredibly aggressive, but that's way more <laughs> reasonable than like, oh, we grew, you know, a hundred, you know, or a hundred percent month over month for the last 12 months. Like you're breaking the laws of business physics at that point. Yeah. Like it takes an incredible founder to be able to manage that growth and do it successfully. Because like what that typically turns into like is like, okay, cool. Like we went from two employees to four employees to eight employees to 16 employees to 32 employees, you know, really quickly, you can't know everybody in your organization. And I've seen this happen so many times where like this breakdown, you, you can't, you can't run the, the org in the same way. It's like, you need this amount of employees, but you just like, don't even know, like as a founder, how to function. And so anyway, personally, especially when you're doing self-funded stuff, it's like slow, consistent, honestly, it's boring. <laughs> like yeah. if you actually saw my, like if somebody actually saw my day to day, they'd be like, that is the most boring thing <laughs> ever. Right. Like in reality, you know, yep. it, but we see these highlights of like in glimpses of the, of the best parts, right? Like the little, the, the, the upticks that happen. And people like base, you know, and, and compare like their personal, like whatever they're ha like going through at that point based on that. And like, in reality, there's just like grindy work that's going on in the background. And, and, you know, you have to be like comfortable with that and willing to do that. And also just like, it's, you know, you're just sometimes like, especially like when you're starting out, it's just you, like, you're just like, you know, you're just you. shouting into the void, trying to figure out like, you know, what is even there or where, what the direction is to go. And so anyway. I, I just glamorize. I mean, this has all been said a million times. Like I'm, I'm just a derivative, you know, piece of shit, like just like everybody <laughs> else. Like there's, uh, I'm not saying anything new. I think it's just like good to be reiterated that especially like, you know, watching anything that's happening um, with uh, like on social or whatever, right? Like you don't know any of the aspects that's actually going on in the background. Like just to, you know, bring back what we talked about earlier with like, <laughs> it's just fires, right? <laughs> it may look yep. like it's like cool and chill, but in reality, it's like pure fire on the other side of it. So. Thank you all for listening to this podcast. Just wanted to take a quick second to give a shout out to Micromedia. Micromedia is the company that I use to essentially create this podcast that you all are consuming right now. They handle my long form editing and my short form editing. I would be pressed to find anybody that's doing better short form than we are here at virtual ventures and micromedia is the company that's making that happen so feel free to reach out to me i can put you in contact with them if that's something you're interested in um and enjoy the rest of the show yeah no people think that they leave their nine to five to some glorious entrepreneurial journey but then you work nine to nine and it's the most stressful bad math, but probably 14 hours of your day you could ever imagine. Um, all right, here's the softball question that you earned before we dive into the cool things that you're building. <laughs> if you watch the like content you put out and in the podcast that you put out, you love distribution. Like why, why are you so obsessed with that? Yeah. I, I, so my, my mantra is distribution is more important than products. Um, and like the reason for that is like I've seen unbelievable products that are terrible at distribution go nowhere and never see the light of day. And, you know, in contrast, I've seen all right products or even terrible products <laughs> that have great distribution and they like are, you know, multi million billion dollar companies. Like a great example of that is like NetSuite, right? Like it's like an email server, like for uh, like a, it's an ESP for um, like enterprise. It's the worst software that's like ever been built. Like full stop. I've like had to use it like when I was like in a you know another life working at a B two B marketing agency. Like our clients used it, and like that <laughs> that software is a multi million dollar company. It, it employs thousands of people, and it won because it had better distribution, right? And it, also, there's like right place, right time, all this stuff. But um, I don't know. I just see like so many. It's it's hilarious. Like I, I actually don't consider myself like an indie hacker or like a like, or even a bootstrapper, it's like, we are self-funded, like we have capital, like, <laughs> like we are deploying our own money basically to grow these companies, um, be, like based off of like all of this portfolio of assets that we own and et cetera, et cetera. But the, I see so many like you know, indie hackers that just like build products or you know, they're, they just, and they work on it, you know, they think they do distribution for a month. Like I have stuff that's like, I have these, you know, small companies that are like micro SaaS companies that it took 12 months to get first customers. 
And it's like, it didn't even pay itself off, you know, after two years, but now it's like, oh, it pays my rent. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like that is like, and that's the, that is like a part of this. Um, and it's like that timeline, like, obviously, like, as you get better at distribution, you can shorten that where it's like, cool. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, month one, I have at least a couple customers. Right. So it's paying its bills. Right. And it's paying for its own marketing. And then it creates this engine, right. Where it's like, it fuels its own growth. You have to create some type of growth flywheel, but I'm obsessed with distribution just because again, like I've seen, and, and a lot of the times, like, especially in SF, like in Silicon Valley, like all of these founders are like, they are brainwashed to think that good product wins always. And like, they're like the best product and like, it, it'll distribute itself and people will find it. It's like, hell no. Like yeah. Airbnb, what did they do? They like hijacked Craigslist, the Craigslist listings, right? <laughs> like Uber, <laughs> what did they do? Like they had all of these companies that we look at as being like product led companies all had some initial catalyst that they had to do to like some distribution catalyst that they piggybacked on top of like, and it's always typically some platform that they're piggybacking on top of to get that initial like, like bump. And that's what allows them to get off, themselves off the ground. Once they get going, yes, of course, word of mouth happens and those types of things. So like good growth people, like what they're doing is they're actually trying to build marketing that is compounding so that it's word of mouth is happening at a larger scale. Like that's really what we're trying to accomplish, right? Like if you're doing marketing yeah. well, you're influencing conversation to happen that you never will know about, you'll never be able to attract, et cetera. And like content, podcasts in particular, are like the most unbelievable way to do that. Like I like a friend of mine, he's in the biotech space and I'm like helping him grow his podcast. And like, I mean, the inbound they get now, we're like six months into this thing with him. And like, he like just got reached out to by like a massive company. Like I'm talking like, you know, you, like it's a four letter word, right? Like, the, like yeah. these types of like electronics manufacturers. And they're basically like, yo, we want to like, how can we work with you guys? And they're like, you know, he gets asked on the, like on the daily basically now, like how big is your team? And they like, think it's like 200 people. It's like 11 people. It's a startup, you know? but like media, like their own content is how they can basically project this larger entity and get this, like, get this, it's relationships at scale that they can create through this podcasting piece. Right. I always think about it as like, it's one to many sales. Like, and what, and what world do most people like, you know, on a weekly basis, stand up in front of a crowd of 5,000 people or however many downloads you're getting. Right. And talk for an hour. And those people listen to it for an hour. Like, Nobody does that. There's like maybe like 0.1% yep. of people in the world that actually do like that type of public speaking. But like with a podcast, you can do that constantly. And as a founder, it's like the, it is the largest growth lever I've ever seen just as a way to basically build brand early on and build relationships with your target audience so that you become like a known name within that organization and all this trust is built into your organization. So, yeah, no. And, and that's why I started this podcast and you said something that I get that question all the time. It's like, dude, you work a nine to five. Somehow you put out an episode every week. You put out clips every week. You put out a blog post every week, a newsletter every week and posts on social. Like, where do you find the time and how many people are working for you? And I'm like, I have one editor and, and that's it. Like AI just does the rest. And I, I, I think, I think it's a great it's segue. Crazy, in that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's nuts. People, people don't get it. Like, that's the thing. Like, I work in technology. I'm pretty up to date on AI and everything going on. Most people just cannot comprehend that that's how it works. And they're like, how long does it take for you to do all that? And I'm like, well, the editor sends me the video on Sunday. I upload it on YouTube, use an AI to pull all the information I need. And the newsletter is scheduled. The blog post is scheduled. All the shorts are scheduled. And the episode is scheduled to go live within maybe an hour and 30 minutes of work a week. And it, and I get even at a small scale, a hundred to 150 people a week watching what I'm putting out, which like you said, there's plenty of big public speakers that probably don't talk in front of 150 people a week. And that just continues to multiply and compound and compound and all on the back of AI. And I think that's just a great segue for me to ask, You've been building software since 2015. You have three AI-based startups right now, Swell AI, Draft Horse, and then now one that I just recently saw, Acclaim Podcasting. Um, explain those to people that don't know and how they work. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Acclaim isn't really in the AI space. It's more just on the agency side. And really, we're just like oh, experimenting okay. with podcast growth for companies. Um, but Swell and Draft Horse, like they're deep. I mean, it's like everybody though, right? It's like, this is an AI startup. It's like, no, this is an <laughs> API wrapper with a tailwind front end. Like, <laughs> so yeah. the, diff the, the thing though, is it's solving this job to be done that traditionally like was a lot of human effort. And so Swell AI is an AI writer for podcasters, um, basically, like what it does is you can take an MP3 or a recording of an MP4, et cetera. You upload it into it. And minutes later, you have a transcript. Uh, you have like show notes written in like whatever format that you're trying to like get them written in. Um, long form blog post articles, uh, email newsletters, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, LinkedIn posts, you know, anything that you can imagine. It basically repurposes that content. Um, and, you know, traditionally that would take you know, a team of three people, you know, maybe 24 hours or 48 hours to get all the ad, like out the door. And again, like if you can, as an individual, just have this done within an hour and a half. Um, yep. So our real focus with that company is more and more turning into like enterprise clients. Um, so like specifically focused on um, they're managing multiple shows like podcast networks and agencies managing multiple shows um, that uh, like they need basically like custom outputs for every one of the clients that they're working with. And I'm honestly, it's, it's kind of wild to watch like other businesses build their businesses on top of us. It's like, that's, you know, as a founder, that's like the most awesome thing. Right. Cause it's yeah. just like, oh, I'm making these other people money. Right. Like that's the mm -hmm. best place to be in. Um, and then draft horse AI was actually a company that we spun out of swell. Um, we built it as an internal tool initially. Um, so draft horse is an AI content writer. It can write like hundreds of SEO optimized articles in minutes. Um, you basically give it a list of target keywords and it just, you know, <laughs> like one to three minutes later, you can have a hundred articles that are 2000 words long. Um, it's amazing. It's ridiculous. It, yeah. Like we, so I built it as a tool to basically um, like grow swell, was talking about it in public and then people were like, Hey, I want that thing. <laughs> and so we spun up like a, you know, an MVP of it, let some friends into it. And then we went live and it just kind of caught fire. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, really kind of evolving quickly and we're realizing, um, that like more and more there's whatever, there's kind of these segments of like people that just like want, like, you know, the AI to do as much like as it can. And then there's also mm -hmm. like, there's other people that want this human inter intervention over the top events. So we're starting to experiment kind of with all these different, um, ways to provide value to clients. But yeah, those are the two kind of the core products. <laughs> I laugh like because I'm, you know, a, we, we build, I build companies for a, a living <laughs> and like specifically start companies for a living. I'm actually a terrible manager. Um, <laughs> but that's like why we bring in like other people to handle the processes and stuff. But the um, like these two products, uh, I, I think about content now on, on a spectrum, like you have like commodity content and like very like brand, like, you know, differentiating content. Um, so like, podcasting is this way to build brand and differentiate like really effectively and then in contrast like you know, like writing a bunch of seo content to just get inbound traffic that's just like commodity that's a commodity content play right it's just like really you're trying to build a massive top of funnel both of these things in combination like I, i've seen again like when we were at rupa like that's literally what we did we built that company based on these philosophies of doing you know a combination of these things all together um, but like now it's like, oh, like you basically with that stack, you could go build, you know, that stack and you know how to run some ads, like some paid ads, like on Facebook and Google ads and, you know, LinkedIn or whatever. And like, you can basically build companies entirely with, you know, that like, and it could be a, you know, a single marketing individual, like you could hire them offshore and just get a marketing generalist. And suddenly they now have the ability to operate like, <laughs> you know, a, a massive org, like a 10 person growth org that would be at a traditional startup. And so that's kind of what we're seeing and what we're trying to do, right? I'm trying to like make 10x marketers, 100x marketers and like, you know, the average marketer a 10x marketer. So anyway. Yeah, that's funny you say that. I actually have it written down here saying Cody thinks 10x marketers who can use AI will be 100x marketers. <laughs> totally. So and and I agree. I, I think it's crazy. Like I, I think the amount of output that people who can leverage these tools are going to be able to put out is something we couldn't have even imagined two years ago. 100%. I think solo marketers, like you said, will be able to take 40 clients on and have no problem running it with AI if you know how to use it correctly, because it's such a powerful tool. And something that I actually kind of like about it is people think that AI can just do anything. 
but it's actually not that easy to just use. You actually do have to learn it and how to prompt it and how to talk to it. So I think it still leaves that a little bit of a barrier to entry so that it's not just this free for all and there's content everywhere and it's a little bit of a mess. Like it still lets the A players have the advantage of where if they were already an A player, they definitely understood the trend and they definitely got themselves up to speed. So I think it's just really cool. I think we're in this, like I said, very unique time where we're going to see a lot of really big businesses that we're going to see around for a lot of years to come built now with really small teams. And I think what's really cool about companies with a really small team, I work in corporate America. My company's massive. It moves slow. (laughs) The ship steers very slow. Things take a while to get done. But I don't, we haven't really truly seen some of these newer companies turn into those 50, $100 billion companies. And we're going to see it happen. And they're going to be really small teams. And I'm very excited to see how agile these companies are going to be relative to their brothers and sisters who are 80,000 employees deep doing only a little bit more revenue. Um, so I, I think it's going to be really cool. That was a little side tangent there. <laughs> no, I, I love it, man. I mean, I think we just entered the age of like two persons companies that are doing 10 million AR, right? Like, I, yep. again, I, it's something I, I'm just watching it happen, right? And then I say like two person companies, like, of course, there's other players in the background, like, but, you know, maybe it's like part time offshore. But I mean, I, I'm watching like friends build these companies where it's like they have like contractors that maybe they specialize in a specific thing, and they own that in that entire channel. And all they're doing is orchestrating all of those people in the background, right? And like, that is the magic that's about to happen right now. Like, and, and you can look at all these companies, especially like foundational, like, model companies like Midjourney is a great example like i think their employee count is at like 20 and like it's a massive org right Crazy. and you know it's nuts it's absolutely nuts and like that used to be an anomaly right like we had a, one instagram like in the last 10 years and like how many of these companies now exist that are all doing this and so i, I don't know it's it's pretty exciting like yeah, it's it, for anybody that can like build and distribute um like i always like yeah, I, I try to always Basically, like when I talk about business, it's like two things, right? It's like you have something that people want to buy, you can build it (laughs) and you have an ability to sell it. Like if you have those components, like you have a company, right? And it's like now, again, it's easier than ever to do that, all that. Like I just talked to this kid. It was actually awesome. He like literally wrote this like uh, a translation software for podcasting. Um, So it basically like you could take in a podcast episode and it will translate it into Spanish, but it clones your voice. So it sounds like you as well. And I'm just like, Oh my God, you know, and he's not technical. Like he built that with like cursor SO and like, you know, GPT four, like just like a premium, like GPT four subscription. Like that is crazy. That is absolutely crazy to me that that's possible. Right. And so anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, it's like this, (laughs) <laughs> like it's a whole new world that is existing, like in the coming into existence now. It's like, and and really, like I'm having trouble with it because it's like wait, there's so many things I we want to build, but we just don't have time for. And so it's like, how do we yeah. even do that or filter through the noise with all this? And it's just changing so rapidly. Like what we knew a week ago is it, it, entirely different than what we know now. It feels like you know a week in this world is like about <laughs> six months. And so it's funny hearing the corporate America side. Like I, I we've talked to some companies. Um, and like, it just, I mean, they, they, there's no way like it, like they're a hundred, like hundred percent, like tons of these massive orgs are about to get disrupted just because like you're seeing these, these, especially when it's like human labor that they're, they're built on top of. Like I'm watching, yeah. uh, my friend, uh, does this consulting where he calls it digital operations. So he basically goes into an organization and he's like, cool, like, let me look at your whole process. And like, what are the things I can automate? What are the things that we can delegate to an offshore team? And he's like, you know, 90% of the time we can automate and delegate 80% of the process <laughs> using That's AI crazy. and offshore talent, right? So like these companies, like if they're not adjusting to that, like they're just not going to win, right? And like he's doing all this work in the real estate space in particular, because it, a lot of it's just like paper pushing and like AI yeah. is perfect for that. And so they're yep. basically building out these systems and it's all just no code, no code tools. Like that's all they're doing. It's just like, they're building these like, you know, AI workflows and processes that are built on top of it. So 
anyway, yeah, I, I think it's 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 a it's a huge opportunity and and also like for for developers, it's the same thing, right? Like a 10x dev is now on a hundred x dev. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I just interviewed a a person here in Miami who's 22 years old and has sold two SaaS companies, no code SaaS companies, not technical, doesn't know anything about coding, 22 and has exited two companies, purchased a marketplace and is now like in talks of doing a massive seven figure partnership with a no code company just because he looked at the search trends, identified there's not that many people talking about it. He understood it and and was successful with it. And now he's about to build a huge personal brand around it. And he has no technical background. Like I don't think people understand the barrier to entry is as small as it's ever been. You just gotta dive in. Like it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's so accessible now. It's like in, it, in a way that, yeah, it's it just it, like it never was previously. Honestly, I think it's like the best time ever to learn to program too. Like if you actually want to dive yeah. into this, like you can just do things. And I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I always say like, I, I'm a script kitty, right? Like I'm somewhat technical. Yeah. I can do some stuff, but like, I'm a, <laughs> really my, my go-to saying is like, I'm a script kitty that turned into a prompt jockey, right? Like that's really what's happened. But the like, Right now, like I, I mean, we just did this literally today where we're like, we wrote a Python script to like basically create all these Shopify collection landing pages. So like, imagine like you're a Shopify owner and you have a thousand SKUs and you want to make a hundred thousand landing pages to get all of that organic traffic. Like, cool. Like we did that in a couple hours. Right. And it's that's like, amazing. You know, I, li- yeah, I literally have a tweet that's scheduled. That's a video like showing it working. It's, it's, it's nuts, right? Like that's, that's the environment in the world that we're in right now. And that's like the, the, the land, that's how the landscape has changed basically so yeah um and you made you threw out a point there you have a tweet scheduled the last thing i kind of wanted to go over to kind of wrap up this whole conversation which i think the overarching topic is distribution just in so many different forms you're building an amazing brand on x twitter whatever you want to call it now and you have a good strategy around it drop some game for newbies that are trying to get into the Twitter world and, and just talk a little bit about how you tweeting every day is, is, is bringing you inbound and getting eyes on, on your products. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could talk for days about this at this point. Um, but so long story short, um, in, uh, early, you know, Q1 of this, le- of this year, we basically saw this opportunity where like, people like just friends reached out and like, I have, you know, I know a bunch of growth people that, and we're all just like degenerate marketers that are trying stuff. And then as we like, identify things that like actually will make sense for companies and we'll go and we like employ them in the companies that we work at our own. Right. And so I had a friend, some friends reach out and they're like, yo, I'm seeing distribution on Twitter that like I haven't seen since, you know, 2016, right. Like, something was happening basically. And um, so like we started looking at the data and I just was like, Hey, I'm going to write, like, let's do the opposite of what everybody was doing. And at the time it was like thread boy shit. That was just like <laughs> yeah. this long format, like that was the yeah, worst long winded. Yeah. And so I was like, let's get back to what the core of like what this product was like in the origin of this whole thing it was basically just like short form, like small tweets that like, you know, it was just like, what is what's going on? Right. And so I just did that. But then I took it to an extreme. I'm like, let's do 10 a day. Let's treat it like a job. And like every hour, like there's a tweet that goes out. So I did that for seven days. And I think I got like 30,000 or 40,000 impressions. And I had, you know, I think it was like 400 followers on a like aged account that I hadn't touched in years. And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, I, st- I started thinking about scaling this up and really quickly it just turned into like, this is, g- this could be a massive channel for own distribution. Um, and so I'm always like looking for marketing arbitrage. And this is like what I preach and like what I tell every founder that I talk to is like, there's moments in time for marketing arbitrage. You have a short window to capitalize on it, but there are like, that's how brands become the brands that they are. So like wish.com turned into a billion dollar company because they were basically early on Facebook ads and getting one cent clicks, right? It's, and it's like, there's a, you know, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. nuts. And like there was D2C brands that built themselves on TikTok like that, but that's now gone, right? Like, and there's these, yeah. so where are the arbitrages? Like you're, I, we're always trying to identify those and then capitalize on them. One right now is YouTube shorts. YouTube shorts and YouTube like long format content, absolutely crushing it right now. Like I'm just like watching friends build these channels and stuff where I'm like, this is insane. Like it's, you know, it's going to, it's going to provide so much value to the companies that they, that they're associated with long-term. But anyway, so on the Twitter side, um, 
I was like, cool. Like, I'm just going to go follow 5,000 people on Twitter. We're going to get a follow back ratio of like 20%, which is what it ended up being. And I just followed people that had already engaged with accounts that I knew would like my content. So as an example, mm -hmm. like one I did was like Harvard Call or whatever. Um, he had like a huge following. Um, and he talks about like, you know, bootstrapping businesses. I'm like, cool. Anybody that likes his tweet is probably going <laughs> to like my content. So I'm going to go follow all the people that like, like his stuff. And so why you follow people that engage is because they will engage there. Like there's lurkers and engagers and you want yeah. engagers to basically come and engage with that content. That's how you get that boost. So again, get to a thousand followers. And then as long as I'm just like creating content on that daily basis and posting that content. You get that distribution and then this like natural growth effect, the flywheel starts to occur. And so I did that for, I was like, cool, I'm going to do it for two, like 60 days. Let's see what happens. We figured out the growth rate was 60%. And then I just started to see insane impression numbers, right? Where I was like, okay, I have a thousand followers and I'm getting 200,000 impressions a month. Like I, you know, I'm paying $8 for that with like an X, you know, whatever, a Twitter blue subscription. I, yeah. That's the cheapest CPM on the internet, right? So like cost per thousand impressions. I couldn't get that yeah. anywhere else. And I'm like, okay. Again, scale that up. And so like now I think I'm at like close to 12,000 or something like that, that when we're That's having amazing. this conversation. It's like six months later. And like in the last uh, 28 days, I think I've gotten like 4.1 million impressions or something like that. And That's it's crazy. driven like, you know, close to 100,000 clicks to all of my, you know, or sorry, it's uh, like uh, close to 200,000 profile views. And it's driven around like 40,000 clicks within like the last 20 days to all of my stuff. Um, For $8. Yeah, for eight dollars. I mean, it's nuts, right? And like, <laughs> I, I how I do this is like it, so. It, so that's like the whole process. The actual like like tactical side of it is like, well, how do you write good content? Well, you do stuff that you think is cool. <laughs> you document it and you talk about it in public. And then the stuff that gets the most like virality, you analyze that data, look for the things that are getting the most impressions and reach, and then you basically let that influence the future content that you make. So like every Sunday I sit down and I write like 70 tweets for the week, right? I always joke. I'm like, I sit down with a glass of whiskey and I just write 70 tweets, but I'm looking at the stuff that went viral in the past and I'm just remixing it. I'm not reinventing anything new. I'm like that's how you, it's the same thing. Like if you look, like if you look at my stuff, like honestly, if you just scroll through my timeline, if somebody did it, they could probably find the same semantic, like it, it like the same tweets that almost have the same meaning or the same like essence are just scattered throughout the last months. Um, there's really like not a lot of difference, but the difference is that the audience has gotten larger. And so because the volume is happening so often as well, and like I, we, we see so much media, you don't remember that thing that you saw 60 days ago, right? It feels like a fresh yeah. thing because it's remixed and done. And like, that's actually how you do organic social. Like people don't talk about this enough, but like how you actually do organic social well is you publish a bunch of shit. You look at the top performing 20%. What do they all have in common? Cool. Let's do more like that. And then you do more like that. And then you do that process over and over again. You do that on a monthly or a weekly basis or whatever it takes. And that's how you can grow these organic channels. And like that's the, the best creators, that's what they're doing, right? They're analyzing that data and looking at what's working. And they just like, they cut the fat, right? Yeah. I always talk about like dig digital marketing as being a, um, it's, it's like, you need to be Darwinian. <laughs> like you need to like, it's like, it's like, in digital marketing, the things that win aren't the things that like, they, they aren't winning. They're actually just like the, the ones that are like left over, right? It's like, you're, tr you're trying yeah. to cut, it's like process of elimination. That's really what you're trying to get to. So I try a hundred things and like, what are the top 20 things? Cool. Like I'm gonna eliminate those bottom 80. I'm gonna only focus on that top 20 and all my resources go there. And I've seen companies build million dollar, you know, get to their first million ARR with, like one to two channels, but they tried 20 things to identify those one to two channels and like the, you know, the actual tactical things within those channels that are effective to them. So. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you for sharing those tactical tips because I feel like not all the time people are willing to, to help people listening and people like to tiptoe around the edge and, and say certain things, but not really willing to give ways that they get it done. And I mean, you just told people right there exactly how you grow on Twitter. Sit down do on a Sunday. Six months and you will, you will exist, right? Like build yeah. a thing, talk about it and do what I just said for six months and you will get to that place. And I'm looking at it like the growth rate on this again is like at 60% compounding month over month. I don't even believe this, but the data is saying this, that like by the end of the year, I'm going to have an account that's 50,000 followers and doing 20 million impressions per month. Like, I don't like the data is saying that I don't believe it yeah. whatsoever, but like, that's what's happening just by following that process. And if I go, you know, 
fast forward back, like, okay, cool. Like from March, like that's a nine month period basically that that occurred in. And I get 20 million impressions per month on all the stuff that I'm building. I basically have own media and rails for whatever I want to like get out in public. I just like put it on and it's there, right? So it just yeah. creates, it, it, it's a way to basically like any company you're trying to get your first users, like that's the way to get them in the door. So, I mean, and we could talk about like, this like SEO is this it, 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 like with AI is like this whole thing that's it's the same process, right? It's like find long tail keyword phrases that are related to your brand, write a piece of content about every one of them and like publish them and make sure Google can see them and that they're indexed. And like, you know, obviously it has to be good content, but like I'm <laughs> seeing companies just do that. And like in the first 30 days, getting leads from this content that they're publishing. And the reason that that's like possible, right, is because the entire like market, like again, Twitter had this moment where it was giving free reach. We're in this moment right now where it used to cost $100 to write an article. Now I can write it for a dollar, right? So like if I yep. wanted to write a thousand articles previously, that was a hundred grand. I can now write the same thousand articles for a thousand bucks. Like, holy shit, right? Like, yep. you know, it's, it's, and basically that turn, you know, all these things, they turn into a land grab because everybody, like the market is going to try to like take that arbitrage and they're going to exploit it as long as they can. So I, I Anyways, I just try to reemphasize that because like all these things, like if somebody's listening to this a year from now, all of this that I'm talking about, it probably doesn't work. So you like have to be a practitioner and like be, I always say like be in the pit, like you're either in the pit or you're not in the pit. Like because there's yep. no other way to do this. Like there's no other way to like see and have a pulse on what's actually happening in the market. So yeah, I mean, I, I think this is gold. Like this is so helpful for people. Like, I mean. I always say this. It's funny. Like I'm, I'm always like, this is a little bit selfish for me because I'm in the process of trying to do it for myself. And every time I get on here and talk with a guest, like I'm learning, I'm trying to get more knowledge. And this is a, a great example of like this. You just said stuff that I'm going to go implement immediately. And I hope people listening and watching are going to go do the same because you're live in front of us proving that it works. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I mean, there's... <laughs> With all this, though, too, right? Like, it's like, yeah, it, it looks like this all happened overnight. I was like, it's, it's the funniest part with all this. It's like, that's like, this is 10 plus years of like career. Like, you're yeah. just now seeing it all, right? Because, of course, yep. like, this is the part of the curve where it gets crazy. But, like, all of these things, like, I've done so much, like, terror, like, you know, just garbage work, honestly, right? Like, in the past. And, uh, like, but all of those things are necessary. Like, it's funny hearing you talk about, like, yeah, like, you know, I built these Discord channels and, like, I, you know, I wasn't thinking about brand and all this. And it's like, Everybody has done that. Like everybody I know is like, how do I get rich quick? And then they're like, okay, cool. I've lost it now. How do I build <laughs> things where I can never lose it? <laughs> yeah. And like that have compounding effects because as soon as you start to realize and think in those compounding terms, like your whole worldview changes because you're like, oh, cool. Like if I'm growing at 20% month over month compounding, that means that every three months, my company or every three to four months, my company is going to double, right? So like, yep. say you have a podcast, right? And you're growing at 20% compounding month over month to your listeners. That means that like every three months, I'm going to double. So that means that every year I'm going to grow by 16x. Like as soon as you start to think in that way, all of the view, like the worldview changes, right? And so like, but everybody has to go through that process of doing like hacky, like, and I still do this, right? Like I, I have these things that are just like, it's fun to me. Like we're like messing around with Parasite SEO and I'm doing like no face YouTube videos, and, you know, YouTube channels. And like we're doing all this like digital download like type stuff, right? Like all of these things. And like, I'm just looking for data. Like I'm not saying don't do those, <laughs> but realize that like, oh, I, it's more valuable to build brands that like can live on and after me. And then I can go and sell for whatever, like three to five X multiples when it's as an example, a software company that has like no employees and just prints money, right? <laughs> like with an 80 to 90% margin. So yeah, no, and then this is one of those conversations where like, I've just completely lost track of time because we're talking about such good stuff. And I think people listening, I think this is going to be one of those episodes that people don't drop off till the last second, uh, because I'm going to make sure people know there's gold hidden in the back of the episode. You just got to make it there. Um, but I want to leave you with the same question I leave every guest that comes on and it's very simple. You can answer it however you want. The time frame can be whatever you want. But what are you, Cody, excited about in the near future? Yeah. Um from a business standpoint, what I'm most intrigued by is like I and, and really what we're exploring with all these companies that we're making, both Swell and Draft Horse are, are components of this. But like I'm curious, like can a company market itself? Like five years ago I kind of had this epiphany. Like we you know, it, all 
really like when you look at marketing, you're right. It's, it's kind of two things. It's like, we have limited resources and I have an action that I'm trying to get a user to make. And it's like, you know, find the path of least resistance between those things. <laughs> and the miss, like, you know, that five years ago, like you could connect all these APIs and all this could happen. Right. And you could probably, you could, all these things could like connect and work. Um, but there wasn't like that knowledge, like that, that, you know, intelligence that existed that kind of tied it all together. And for the first time, you know, like it, that thing now exists that can make decisions based on the data that it's collecting and providing and, uh, you know, all this context that you're giving it. And so, like, I mean, we're watching friends do this. Like we had a friend that gave this, like, <laughs> gave an agent, like a, his credit card. And like, he's like, it's running in like a print on demand e-commerce shop. Right. And it's like, it's not making that much money, but it's like, it's making a couple percent per month. Right. Yeah. Like, that is crazy. That is crazy to me. And like what I'm super interested in and like curious to find out is like, can we build it? And like what we're, you know, something, you know, the, the, the North star with draft horse is like, can I build a thing where like a company plugs their website in and like, it just starts proliferating content. Right. And yeah. the organic traffic just starts growing. Okay, cool. Like that, if we can figure that out and who knows if we can, we'll see, like, if we can figure that out, like what happens then if we take that even further and then it's like, okay, now can we do social content? Like, can we have where like a human records a podcast and they just like give it, you know, to whatever they upload it to a Google drive folder and then it makes all the clips and it writes all the content and it distributes it. It schedules it. It does all those things. All that is possible right now. And so I, I'm really curious to see like what happens in that realm. And that's what that gets me excited because I think there's so many product people that just don't know how to do distribution. And if there's this like distribution engine that they can plug into, like that changes the entire kind of landscape of like what, what it means to be companies. And again, I don't know, this is probably a pipe dream. Like I'm not in real, reality, it's like not going to happen. Versions <laughs> of it will come into existence, but that like that idea is something that's super interesting to me, like a company that can grow itself. Like that's wild. And it's, I think it is like in a, in a form, in a way like possible at this point. So. I mean, amazing answer. And I would like to follow you on that pipe dream and hope that that does come around because that just means my life gets a little easier. Exactly. And I'm you always make good content and then it gets yeah. everywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm always looking for that. Um, Cody, I want people to be able to connect with you. Uh, where are the best platforms for them to do that? All of it's going to be linked below, but I got to cater to the lazy people who won't click the description that we put time into writing. No, yeah, yeah. Um, you can look me up on Twitter. Um, it's just Cody Schneider XX. Um, and then on LinkedIn, if you just look up Cody, Sch honestly, if you just Google Cody Schneider, I should come up. And if I don't, then I'm doing my job really wrong, like really wrong, <laughs> really <laughs> terrible. So, um, but yeah, I'm doing those two things. And then the, again, the companies are swellai.com and drafthorseai.com. Uh, those two are the ones that we're really like, pushing and building in public currently. So awesome. Cody, thank you so much for coming on the show, dude. This is long overdue. I'm, I'm so happy we got to talk and chop it up and go through all this good stuff. And thank you for coming on and, and really delivering value to our listeners. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. I've, have me back in six months or whatever it takes, man. I know you're going to be huge at that point. So super excited. A hundred percent. You are a repeat guest. I'm already building that list and, and you're right on the top. Love it. Love it. Awesome, man. Thanks again. Awesome. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.